They're out there. Somewhere. The big fish. Peering into the calm surface water, you might not see them in our midst. They are deep down, swimming and lurking. They wear the face of a common vertebrae. Blending easily into the shoal like a bloodthirsty speck of sand in an ignorant bag of flour. As I drag my dinghy along the white sand toward the edge of the water and the searing, low-hanging sun, it was easy to believe I was in a fever dream. The swallowing, gurgling water that ebbed and flowed at my feet, the welcoming blue void that curved away at the horizon. Fishing was like... It was, it was like reminiscing with an old friend. It was like a warm kiss on a Sunday afternoon. A greeting beckoned me from somewhere down the beach, a voice that yelled with a slurred mouthful of rotten seaweed. That of the voice was crackling under smoking two packs a day of vocal fury. The man came jogging up to me, which left great boot prints upon wet sand in his wake. And as we shook hands, his flesh was slippery and feverish, like brushing the belly of sleeping roadkill. Name's Trevor, finest fisherman along the southeast coast, if you don't mind me saying so. His eyes were tight lines under his sage bucket hair. Conqueror of the Floridian Basin, furthest surf cast out here. I flicked him the nervous, tightly pulled line for a smile. The same smile I would have given a hooded passerby. Hey there. I resisted wiping away the gooey slop from his hand out of politeness. George. The falling sun painted the man's face blotchy, tanned pink. He had a glint in his wrinkled eyes as he said, Look over here, chap. I followed his finger to the distant skyline over the cliffs. Graphite clouds were beginning to roll in over the horizon like an avalanche of wet boulders. Say, I knew a lad like you, George. He cleared his thick throat. Name of Rod, a real city boy. The last day I done saw him was a day like any other. We were meant to launch off the ramp together. See, I was a little late, and so the guy, guy gets restless, goes on on his own to catch a few. I watched Trevor for a while as his eyes became fixed on the crashing peach waves, watching things that were never there. Storm came and took him from me, Giorgio. Mother C dragged him down by his limbs, bobbling his lungs until, until his lips drew blue. He drowned? The man shimmied his bucket hat down to the brow with two hands. You bet! That's my vow after that day, I suppose. If I, if I ever caught a city boy fishing heading into rough waters, I'd snatch him. He flicked a thumb over to the metal boat that was floating in the water a few hundred paces away. Oh, no, I'm uh, quite okay, I said. Uh, come now, humor a weather, old man. You darn bet I'll teach you some things. My boat's a sure thing sturdier than that dinghy. His lonely old eyes yanked me by the wrist all the way across the beach to his rustic metal vessel that floated on the shallow water. When we boarded, I was immediately greeted by blunt groans and bubbles beneath us that I wasn't accustomed to. Before long, we were motoring toward the great red lamp in the sky with nothing but a whisper spoken, all thanks to the boat which whirred and splashed beneath us as we thumbed along into blue nothingness. I was grateful for the quiet, but as I caught the man's face, it was clear that he had a groaning restlessness that I lacked, a yearning for derailing chatter that only came from a finely aged loneliness. When he stopped the boat and dropped the anchor, I knew I was right. When he immediately started, You ever seen a big fish, George? I gave him an awkward nod. A few, yeah. Never caught one, though. Brother pulled up a sturgeon. Trevor was shaking his head as he untangled his line from his rod. No, I'm talking about the big fish. One that doesn't have no name. His hands were passionate and animated as he spoke. 
He swiftly snapped up my crackling smile before I could laugh. They're smarter than us, you know. The ones below. Oh, so it's even worse, I thought. He's crazy, crazy. I should have never been on this boat. Take these, he muttered. Hurried as he reached into his jacket's many pouches. He slipped a few gelatinous cubes the size of a die in my palm. Most were the color of red splashed peaches, though some very uh, deep purple gray, blotchy grapes from an ashen willow. You probably won't believe me yet, Giorgio, but you will soon enough. <clears throat> he cleared his throat. The jelly was sweating in my hand, but perhaps it was my nerves. I was breathing quickly. Something about the guy simply made my skin crawl. What are bees? I asked him. He slid one of my hooks through a cube. Bait for the big one. Hey, give her a cast. I let my line sparkle and soar through the pumpkin-tinged sky before it breached the water with a distant plunk. I sat there for a while, entranced by the sea. But the old man never threw out his line. He was coaching me, at least... I should have hoped. The bite be coming soon enough, boy, he nodded towards the ocean. Keep a firm grip on it. I wiped a layer of sweat from my forehead. From my periphery, I saw him extend one wrinkled palm, holding some bait. Try one. Tastes like sweet heaven. What? Still, clutching my fishing rod, I turned my neck to give him a raised eyebrow and shake of my head. What are they made from? Candy, Giorgio. Big fish love this stuff, Trevor said, before throwing a few into his mouth. Melts like butter. He ushered me to try the bait. And so I reluctantly did. The pieces hit my tongue and slid down my tract. Maladherence is to spit in the face of the deranged, and so I chewed them, slowly. Bits of revolting snails that rolled down my throat in lumps, almost coming up as chunks. It was disgusting. It stung with the stench of decay. At first, it tasted like chicken, as everything does, so of sorts, but after swallowing it, might as well have been molded creme brulee the way that it settled. Bliss, right lad? He said as I was done chewing. Two thumbs up. I was lucky to find peace for a while after that. Just watch the sea and breathe, George. Watch the sea and breathe. Shame Rod ain't here to see this city boy eat these jellies. What a way to go. Struck by lightning, no less champion you were, Rodney. Zeus! He screamed. Without warning, I was running into a jog across the boat, following my line. Something was hooked, something big. Hey, fish on, lad, Trevor called. Reeling and pulling, reeling and pulling, I threw my spine forward then backward. Before long, the fish and I were in rhythm, tugging in waves, pulling and leaning in harmonious turns. Trevor, I huffed. Pull, release, pull, release. I thought you told me that Rod drowned. Whoa, 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 she's a big one. Keep reeling, he boomed, his head hanging overboard. You see, if you want to catch the big fish, Giorgio, he was in my face then, stabbing one lesson giving finger at me as he spoke each word in short breaths. Gotta have the special bait, and that boy you do. The low sun on the horizon felt warm against my skin, but it couldn't calm my heart, which felt like it was going to pop. Trevor, you you told me that Rod drowned. Keep going, Giorgio. My yell cut the sound of the ripples in the water like a hot knife. Trevor? There was silence for a while. Words from me were quiet and willing. All that could be heard in the settling boat was my reel spinning and my catch surfacing the water. I hadn't seen what I had fished up. I was too busy staring at Trevor. What's so special? My voice faintly trickling from my mouth. About the bait. He held up a handful of peach cubes and began talking through rubbery, fishy lips. Oh, these fine cuts. His pocket knife sparkled in the hot sun as he absentmindedly twirled it, his face occupied by old memories. Take a look. He nodded his head at me to peer at the water. 
I slowly strode towards the wall of the boat. When touching the edge, I was reluctant to peer over, as if he had asked me to touch a hot stove. My face turned cold, and I looked into the blue abyss below. Dozens of pale rocks floated in the deep azure sea, which stretched as far as my eye could see, but as I stared longer, if I, if I squinted enough, I could no longer convince myself they were stones. They were pale, bloated corpses, hold so many cubed holes scattered into their bellies, thousands all etched into their flesh. Seems you caught the big fish, Boyle. The voice tickling my neck was rasp. A tongue never made for speech. By the time I turned around, its flesh began to bloom, iridescent scales, what remained of Trevor's curly gray hair shed away, snowflake clumps of hairy scalp. Clothes that no longer fit around his neck slid easily from his wet, mucus-dipped gills. I wanted to scream. In fact, I might have. No dollar you do could buy me this bait from nobody. And them to hand these over. His bulbous orange eyes met mine, before his mouth contorted into a wide, toothless grin. I gotta take him out fishing. And so, I am but a warning for future fishermen. For they might not be as lucky as I to dive and swim to shore. They're out there somewhere. The ones you might not see in our midst. The big fish. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I want to tell you thank you so much for watching tonight's video or listening to tonight's episode of the podcast. I really appreciate it, and anytime you guys give me a subscribe or a follow or a like or a comment or literally just a watch, I can't thank you enough for it because you're the reason I keep making episodes and you guys are the reason that I love horror as much as I do. We're in the middle of summer, and I'm from Texas, which means that it's a great time for iced tea. And you know who makes iced tea? My wife. My wife sells tea. My wife sells tea on Etsy.com slash shop slash Ivory Monocle Tea. And if you want to get the Mr. Creepy Pasta special, you can order a dark and stormy night and specifically request a dabbing sticker that you only get if you ask for it. And as always, I want to give a very special thanks to all of my patrons at patreon.com slash Mr. Creepy Pasta, because you guys are the reasons I get to keep my lights on in the house and get wonderful little treats for my cats and everything like that. And also the reason why we keep getting special custom series just for the channel. So a special thanks to Jacob Schaefer, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Brian Arst, Ken Lendo Higuchi, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chase Burnett, Bardo Hawk 764, the Banana Mafia 1, Melancholy Corpse, Hollow Zero, Ferb, Harley, Billy Morrow, Katie Birch, Sashi Sasaku, Caden the Spooky Boy, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Ashwood, Lord of the Weebs, Jay, Faye Lockett, Miss Alexandra, Mr. Unsettling Spaghetti, Eurogore, Suji Campbell, Marco Takes Dabs 420, Stricken, Azarine Fox, Robert White, Andres Garcia, Snails Brennan, Legit Quad Feed, James Bruce, Chris Lovins, Freddy Krueger, Tynan, Justin Johnson, Michael Scarborough, Infernal One, James Lowe, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Jordan Nels, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Someone You Love, Kira the Sloth, Tommy Green, Sky Harbor, Caleb Dougal, Nina Smith, Nico Kyle, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, Trace Miles, Corey Kenshin, and Peaceful Buddha. That's right, guys, at patreon.com slash Mr. Creepypasta, you could join this amazing list of people's names I mispronounce and the list of Patreons down there in the description. But of course, none of that is ever required. I just appreciate you guys subscribing and watching and honestly being here. So, to all of you, sweet dreams. <laughs>